Good evening. My name is Nathan Kelly. I'm going to be doing my persuasive speech tonight. Um, I am going to be comparing, contrasting, as well as persuading on why there needs to be more focus on CTEs, TBIs, PTSD, and stuff on military as opposed to the big push and the big advertising, the big talk about CTEs with NFL players, in particular professional athletes. Um, I'll be giving a decent amount of facts with the actual athletes, mainly their salaries, things like that, and some of the things they deal with when they put themselves at risk, and then the salaries and what we get paid in the military, more specifically in the Marine Corps. Um, every branch is the same with salaries, but more specifically the risks and stuff that Marines take as opposed to other branches. Yes, I'm partial being a Marine, uh, having a lot of combat brothers myself. Um, I tend to uh, be a little partial and any branch is gonna be that way. So, okay. So basically these athletes, these guys get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, millions of dollars a year. So the lowest paid NFL athlete right now is at $49,000 a month. A month, 30 days worth of playing a sport, he's getting played $50,000. The highest paid athlete happens to be Aaron Rodgers right now. He actually makes $4.1 million a month to work out however many hours he wants, required three or four hours a day, hitting the gym, running, doing whatever he's doing, and then practice for two, three hours a day maybe, so probably six to eight hours a day. And then on Sundays, he plays a game for four hours. Yeah, he's got a lot of responsibility. Uh, a lot of big monkeys on the other side, big animals. Didn't mean monkeys in a racial way, just big gorillas. They're 400 pound massive men. Don't matter what race they are. Uh, <clears throat> side jacked. These guys get paid crazy amount of money to play a game. And yes, when they go into this game, they are risking being hit, okay? But when you play a game, you're also trusting that the other team that you're playing against in this combative situation is going to take care of you. You are responsible for not hurting them. They are responsible for not hurting you. I understand accidents happen, and they do. You get blindsided, you get things like that. But there's a lot of athletes out there that are, these rules are becoming effective right now, and they're, the NFL is implementing these rules and these punishments now because these guys do not have any accountability and they are not holding themselves responsible for the hits that they're inflicting on their other players. Not their own teammates, but on the other team. So when you go in headhunting, you go to mean to hit a quarterback in the arm or in the head or in the chest and you're trying to inflict pain, break the body, break these men, that's on you. NFL, kick them out. One, one and done, one time, call it a day. I, I've really had enough of these guys whining and complaining about, oh, he's going to hurt me, or I got hurt here, I hit my head. It's your own fault, dude. They're not being accountable to each other. They're not holding themselves accountable. And then they whine and complain because they don't make enough money for being at risk for doing what they're doing. You want to talk about risks for what you're doing? Let's look at the military, okay? In a Marine Corps, any branch, military period, you have an E1 through an E9. That's your enlisted is a 1 up to an enlisted nine. Those are nine different ranks in the rank structure. Each rank gets you more pay. E1, in boot camp, right out of boot camp, you're an E1 up until nine months into the Marine Corps, you're getting paid $1,700 a month. A month, $1,700, $1,700 a month is what that man gets paid. Then he goes on to his school. By the time he's in his school, you come out of your school and you're a grunt, you're done with SOI, School of Infantry, and you're ready to go to combat. You're ready to go into combat in Iraq, Afghanistan, Fallujah, wherever they send you. At best, you're an E2 or an E3. An E3 is going to be making $2,200 a month. $2,200 a month to put an M16 in his hand with a 9mm on his side and a Marine on each side of him and one at his six. And you walk into a building and you kick in a door. And then there's anywhere between one to 15 other men on the other side of that door that every one of them wants to kill you 
just because you kicked in that door. Because another guy upstairs told you you needed to go kick in that door. It's that simple. So you want to talk about risks going into this. And a risk for TBIs, traumatic brain injury, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And the CTEs that the NFLs get, but we also get them in the military. I've got TBI, traumatic brain injury. That's part of my stuff. There's not many Marines that I know that do not have that because every environment that we are exposed to, yes, we volunteered, we signed that dotted line, but so did the players. The players signed the dotted line worth millions of dollars to go play a game and put themselves at risk when they step on that field. We signed that dotted line, Marines, soldiers, airmen, and sailors, we signed that dotted line and get paid chicken feed compared to what these guys do. And we run the risk of not just getting injured, but dying, dying in battle, dying even in country, <clears throat> stateside. Some of the jobs that we have to do in the air wing, you're around aircraft and, and helicopters and 18s and 22s and 35s, that are deadly every day. Everything that we do on a daily basis, you can die. Now, yeah, you could die on the football field, but what are the odds compared to the odds with what we do? Why are there no big YouTube interviews? Why are there no interviews by these media stations and by NBC, ABC, CNN, all these stations? Oh, because the players are making millions of dollars, but we make chicken feed, so it's no big deal. Right? Oh, but because Biden brought us back and we're not over there anymore? Forget about the veterans, forget about the military, right? <clears throat> it's that simple. We don't need you anymore, so you're good to go. But these players, we need them on Sundays to keep us happy, keep us entertained, and make money. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the NFL. I love my Chiefs. I've been a Chiefs fan since I was a kid. Watched it with my dad for 40 years. But I'd like to see one of those men on that team step into my boots. Lace up the same boots that I have, that my brothers have, and go stand side by side with us with doing what we're doing and what we've done. Explain that one to me. And see if they do it for the same paycheck that we do. They want to go into these contract negotiations. Oh, I need more money. Screw you, man. Seriously? You need more money? Wow. I'm a little bit more passionate about this than I thought. I knew I'd get into this, but uh, I'm definitely a little more heated about it than I thought. So what I'm really getting at here in conclusion, um, they need to take responsibility and have some humility in what they step out every day to do. When they wake up and they strap on them cleats, strap on them pads, everything that they're doing, man, go. you're having a game. You're playing a game, go have fun, okay? I would do it for $50,000 a year. I'd do it for a fraction of what you guys do to get to go play a game. But I guarantee you wouldn't switch shoes with me. Get paid what I get paid to go do what I had to go do and what my brothers had to go do and even what we do today. The chicken feed that we make now to go to school to try and better ourselves and make more money when you guys could go buy a school. Something's not right about this, man. It's just... Something is not right about this. Maybe that's what I'm put here for. Instead of just being passionate about this and trying to convince people, as well as bring awareness to that there is more that needs to be done with veterans and the things that we deal with on a daily basis. Not just the, yes, we have the Mission 22 campaign, because there is 22 veterans a day that commit suicide due to TBIs and PTSD because they don't get the help they need. Eight out of ten of those are because of financial issues. These Marines cannot handle not making money because they can't function as civilians because all they know how to do is kill or be killed. That's all these boys know how to do. So they get depressed. They relive it over and over and over, have the ringing in their ears. There's no amount of white noise that can take those voices out of their heads. But it's something said to be a little bit different. When you lay down and you close your eyes and you see a lineman coming at you in your dreams and when you go to sleep, 
This lineman's going to hit me. He's going to knock me on the back. He's going to break my leg, blah, blah, blah. It's a whole different ball game when you lay down and you close your eyes and all you see is muzzle flashes, grenades going off, Allah Akbar coming at you in your ear from up behind you, from a six-year-old boy running up to you with dynamite strapped to his chest or an AK-47 in one hand and a 9mm in the other, screaming, Allah Akbar, and it's either you or him, and you got to make that decision. Tell me we are the same. There's no way. We are not the same. <clears throat> I really hope that this has maybe brought some attention to some people. I don't know if others are going to see this. I know this is going to be on YouTube. I know, Professor Voss, you're going to see it. I really... Kind of hope you, you listen to the words that I've actually said because clearly I'm more passionate about this than I even realized I was. So, <clears throat> anybody else that sees this, by all means, get a hold of me. Ask questions. I got brothers you can talk to. I got other people you can talk to. I would love to talk to you. That's why I'm a psychology major. This is what I want to do. I want to help my boys to be able to function in society and be functioning in life. Not only survive, but be happy in life. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good night.